So I have a confession to make. Despite coming from a long line of seafarers, I've never been a great fan of boats. The idea of a long ocean voyage on anything much smaller than a cruise liner is my idea of a special kind of hell. But then again, I can totally understand how for some people, a boat, a sea to sail it on, and a blue horizon are the perfect image of freedom and escape. Believe it or not, inside this less than lovely shed sits the realization of just such a dream. The Nataki was hand-built in the early 1930s and then sailed all over the Pacific by Johnny Ray, who later wrote of his adventures aboard her in his classic book, South Sea Vagabonds. It had a twofold appeal. You know, the first was this huge adventure on the high seas. The notion of filling up a, uh, a boat with your mates and everybody chipping in two pounds or something and um, being able to cruise anywhere you liked. It, it sort of reeked of optimism and faith and mateship and <laughs> all of those qualities which really appeal to young men. It just seemed to me to be such a New Zealand story that you could actually do that in this country. And it was entirely possible. I, you know, even then I couldn't think of any other country where you know, this kind of thing would be possible. You know, it'd be possible to build a boat from nothing, from chunks of driftwood you found around the place. A boat, incidentally, that's lasted for, uh, what, 80 years now and still going strong. They always call her Johnny Ray's boat. She's never been referred to as Debbie Lewis's boat, and she probably never will be. She's Johnny Ray's boat, so even after I had her for 20 years, uh, just after I bought her. Who knows? Maybe dreams are contagious, because just like Johnny Ray before her, Debbie Lewis set sail aboard the Nataki with little more than a desire to see the world. Did you know anything about her history when you bought her? Not when I bought her, no. So she just... She just felt comfortable. She... Yeah. And then I um, got the book. Of, someone told me that she had a book written on her, and... I couldn't believe that that's what she was, you know. Johnny Ray wrote in his book that he was fired for daydreaming. Tough luck in the midst of the Great Depression, but also the chance to do more than just dream. So he set about creating his means of escape, a boat built from whatever he could scrounge from the Hauraki Gulf and the streets of Auckland. He got uh, his tar from the roads. He, everything was uh, preserved in tar, and he'd sneak out at night with a big drum and uh, chip away from the sides of roads and pour all this pitch into his uh, kerosene tin or whatever and go back and boil it up, and that would be the, the tar he used to preserve the, the wood. He fastened the, the wood onto the frames with um, fencing wire, lengths of fencing wire, um, soaked in tar and baked in his mum's oven when she was out. <laughs> well, she's a home-built, hard-time boat, and she's held together with number eight fencing wire. She really is. She really is. On the frame, she, she still has the number eight fencing wire holding the frames. There are no bolts holding her frames together. And she's got what they call, like, horse nails, galvanised nails for, for her fastenings. And, and they're still original. And she's held together just fine. Yep. She's a little ship. She's built like a little ship. She sails very well. She's, um, for a cruising boat, she, she was perfect. She, you know, we were averaging, like, across the Atlantic, we averaged 131 miles a day. That's average over, you know, 5,000 odd miles. So she doesn't groan and moan too much, which old wooden boats will groan and moan a lot if they're working too hard. She's, no, she's amazing for, for the way she was built and how easy I went around the world, I know. Ray made it up as he went along and describes in comic detail the mishaps along the way, putting her bow through a wall and almost sinking her at the first launch due to an unplugged propeller shaft. But eventually Ray, with three mates and a cat, set sail for the wide blue yonder. In one of their voyages, the boat, uh, they get caught in a huge storm uh, in the Tasman Sea, and uh, the boat actually tips upside down. It's right upside down. And, um, and he comes back to the surface and uh, there's his boat and uh, he, the keel's floating in the air. And, uh, and um, there's another bloke there too uh, in the water and they, they swim together and they, they climb up and sit on the keel and, and uh, uh, they look at each other and laugh. Uh, which, in my own experience, is a very New Zealand thing to do. 
If Johnny Ray was a self-taught boat builder and sailor, he was also a self-taught author. In the preface to South Sea Vagabonds, he wrote, I am not a writer, never was, and never will be. In a sense, he's right. This isn't great literature in the way we normally mean it. But in another sense, Ray was far too modest because his book captures that dreaming, that yearning for freedom that all of us feel with a straightforward, naive yet heartfelt integrity that achieves exactly what it sets out to do, move the reader's spirit. It is a ripping yarn. It's a great story, and that's going to carry it through anyway. Uh, but uh, it's, there's also that quality of humour in it. It's quite a funny book. Um, and uh, he writes, although he says he doesn't, he does very well at descriptions. The, the, the scene where his boat turns over in the, in the Tasman, it's so dark and bleak and, uh, uh, that you can imagine every bit of it. You can imagine the islands that he's lying around and he does, uh, he does I think he does very well with quite a few words, because it's not a long book, it's quite a short book, it only, only takes a few hours to read. Like his book, Johnny Ray himself eventually went out of print. By all accounts, including his own, it was a bloody good life, lived to the full. As he put it in the preface to South Sea Vagabonds, I was a dreamer once, but now my dreams have come true and I am satisfied. What do you make of him, having read the book? What do you think of who Johnny Ray was? Uh, he's a very good storyteller. He took himself on lots of adventures. Um, he was a vagabond. Yeah. And he was that later on in life, as far as I know, too. He sort of lived in the Hiraki Gulf. He built another boat and literally went fishing. And, done the old job and but I don't know somebody else might know but I don't think he ever had a serious job again not after the one he kicked in at the beginning of the book yeah so yeah. and he just ended up on Waiheke Island I think uh, uh, that a book that's still being read and uh, read avidly uh, after 80 years has, has uh, a quality to it which I think a lot of writers would really envy as for the Nataki herself Debbie Lewis has handed her on to a classic yacht trust back where she was born in Auckland. There may be more dreams yet in Johnny Ray's old vessel.